Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Weekly Stash, where we talk about everything happening in the comic book world. With me, as always, is Mr. Marvel and Mr. DC, my two comic book writers for TMStash.com, Ed Garrett and Joseph Gagel. How are we doing, guys? You're all right. How's it going, guys? All right. Well, let's uh, not waste any time and talk about the biggest news of the weekend, which would be X-Men, Days of Future Past, which I just had a chance to see today. I know, Joe, you got to see it earlier this weekend. And we both shared the same opinion. It was awesome. Yeah, it really, uh, it really blew me away. Uh, brought everything together and uh, forged a new path for the for movies to come, and has me excited. Yeah, me too. I was a, a big fan of of the movie. I thought it was a great a great way to tell uh, the story of X Men. And it one of the better movies that they've done in a while. Uh, me Brian bringing Brian Singer back was was awesome sight to see, and the movie just held true to everything you would want in an X Men movie. You had all the all the original characters returning. You had their younger counterparts. Hugh Jackman still kind of carries the movie as he obviously plays himself in the past because he doesn't age. So that was it was really 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 well done. And the action was phenomenal. The ending was great. But uh what other points you had we we're talking pre-show Joe and you had a, a few qualms with the movie, a few more than I did. Well, I mean these are just little things like you know um Spoiler alert in some of this, sorry, but, like, you know, there's the, the part where, you know, Wolverine ends up underwater. I, I was under the impression that he could die from drowning. I guess I was wrong, um, at least in the, in the film sense. Um, other little things, we, you notice that, um, and if you, those who saw the Wolverine know that uh, his claws got chopped off and the bones grow back, but the metal doesn't grow back with them. In the movie... He just suddenly appears to have his metal back in this future self. I'm guessing that maybe Magneto helped him out with that somehow. That's the only way I can think of any kind of uh, possible scenario there. And uh, the other big one was that Kitty Pride somehow her power set has grown or whatever to allow her to send people in their minds back in time. Something I thought Professor X would do himself because he's supposed to be the... Uh, Outside of Jean Grey, the most powerful psychic ever. So those are those are some of the little qualms I have. They weren't enough really to, you know, mire anything for me because, you know, I, I feel like in Kitty's uh, case, she was part of the original story in the comics, so that I guess they wanted her to still have a part in the film, even though it, obviously they weren't going to be sending her back because she was maybe not even alive in the 70s. So. Well, at the same token, with the Professor X thing, I thought Professor X more had the ability to see into the past and to get into people's minds more so than he had the ability to transport people's minds into their old selves. So I thought they did a good job of the movie of quickly establishing what she was doing and why she was doing it. So, I mean, it was it was quick, probably for a reason, so, I don't, I don't, I don't have, I don't have any qualms with that. If, if you want, if you want to read all about the differences of really what happened in the comic and you know versus kind of what was happening in the, the movie, go check out Joe's article on TMStash.com. He does a great write up on there of everything that happened in the written books versus what we end up seeing in the movie, which it follows. Fairly closely, but as Joe mentioned, there's a few things that are slightly different. Now, to go into major spoiler alerts, I have to bring up... Um, well, for those of you that don't know, the next X-Men movie is called X-Men Apocalypse. And with that being said, what did you think of the... Uh, what, what were you technically calling this, but the scene at the end of the credits... 
Well, from from everything I've heard, the scene at the end of the credits was takes place in the distant past as you see Apocalypse shaping uh, an ancient pyramid as the people are chanting his real name, um, which I it, it escapes me right now, but it's it's like in, it's like in Sabun Nur or something like that. But they're 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 chanting his name over and over, so you know fans who know who he is know that's who they're talking about. You, the camera shifts and you see a very young looking person um, and in the distant background you see four people on four horses so to allude to his four horsemen and uh, I remember you said before the podcast Stephen that you thought that it may have uh, had a, a feminine look to the, the character and I, I would, definitely I just, does but I suggested it was just because of his uh, his age and that he was viewed as a god and maybe even perfect, so maybe that's why he has that uh, feminine youngness to him. Yeah, it looks it looks good. This movie did a great job of really bringing the X Men back to what to its roots and to what the X Men should be, and is setting up what should be another fantastic. X Men movie with X Men Apocalypse. So if you haven't seen it, run out and see it. No more spoilers. So come back as we will get into talking about what's really going on in the comic book world. And this week we had a few things, we a lot of things, and a lot of stuff coming up next week. But Ed, you had a, some interesting things going on in the DC world with Forever Evil. Forever Evil wrapped up this week. Uh, we finally got issue seven out, and and I'll say this: a lot of big event comics, the last chapter turns out to be rather anticlimactic. Not so for this one. There's a whole lot in issue seven that should have some real impact on the new 52 moving forward. And I'm, I'm going to have to give spoiler alerts, <laughs> alerts on this one because there's a lot of big stuff here. Uh, Basically, everyone on Earth, and in particular Batman and Superman, owe a huge debt to Lex Luthor now, and Lex is taking full advantage. Uh, this battle hinges on his participation. He directly saves Dick Grayson, directly saves Superman's life, uh, and he's going to use it to full advantage. Uh, we know that Dick Grayson was going to live because they were already soliciting the series Grayson. Uh, but uh, the way he survives is very interesting. There's some interesting survivors out of this. Not all the crime to syndicate is dead, so they leave a couple of characters still alive, ready to uh, maybe come back for a later series somewhere down the road. And there's a couple of heroes that are completely missing still, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to play into Multiversity, which is coming down the road uh, this summer, where we'll be going into more of the different worlds of the DC Multiverse. Uh, that's a series that's been percolating on the back burner for years now, and I, I can't wait for that one to come out. But the other big thing from this one is that Lex Luthor now knows who Batman really is. He has figured out that Batman is Bruce Wayne, and you know he's going to use that. Uh, that's going to be a huge thing in the New 52. Uh, the, the, the last good thing that, that came out of it is that Ted Kord, who is a fan favorite who was killed in a pre-New 52 continuity in, in a really senseless way. Uh, in this, New 52 never was killed, is still alive, but has yet to take on his Blue Beetle identity. And we do get to see a, a, a sort of cameo from him and a little hint from the, from the shape of the uh, icon on his T-shirt uh, of what may lie ahead. But uh, I think the big news coming out of this is going to be Lex Luthor is now the hero of the day. No one trusts the Justice League. They do trust him, and he knows who Batman is. He's going to use it to full advantage. This is going to be really interesting. This is going to set up a great. This is going to set up a great storyline with no one trusting the Justice League now. I think that's going to be really, really cool to see how they can they can play that out in so many, so many different ways. And uh, and on top of the fact, Lex Luthor knowing who Batman is, it just sets up so many cool things they can do in the universe there. Yeah, and so. I'm looking forward to see what happens with this Lex and Batman thing. You go back to even Silver Age, they would have some occasional stories where Lex would bother Batman and the Joker would bother Superman. And, and through the years they've done it, but they've never had it where it was this close for this long a period of time. And, and the animosity they feel toward each other is 
is palpable. It should be a lot of fun to read. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. That that's going to be awesome. And Joe, this week uh, with the Marvel, we had some pretty cool stuff going on with Original Sin, right? Yeah, it was pretty good. We had uh, you've got a bunch of these uh, interesting groups of heroes that have been put together, more like two or three man groups by an unknown person who's going out investigating clues as to why is going on what is going on. And then you've got the other Avengers who are chasing down uh, a, uh, a creature that has been exposed to one of the eyes and has gone kind of crazy. And when they corner him and find where he came from, they are revealed one of the villains is the orb, a Z-lister who was wearing a mask, and basically he's, his, his, his mask is a eyeball for a head. And uh, he is threatened to unleash the secrets in the eye he is carrying as a, like a bomb. So that's kind of where they left things off. And uh, later on I'll, I'll talk about uh, some of the other original Sin stuff that's coming up. And uh, real quickly, since we had uh, X Men, I want to I want to do a little quick X Men sweep. It shouldn't take but a minute. Um, as as we said earlier, the movie is uh, really good, and uh, a lot of the books they have out are doing pretty good. In uh, all new X Men, we've got uh, the Future Brotherhood has invaded their base, and they're uh, they're causing trouble there. The Uncanny X Men are dealing with. Uh, a rogue shield uh, individual who has unleashed sentinels upon them. The uh, Amazing X-Men just started out. Uh, it just kind of seems to be like an independent one where they're just telling different tales from uh, book to book. Wolverine and the X-Men has been telling a really good uh, story about the future. Uh, almost kind of goes along with what was kind of being told, but it's like a future of the now type of story. Uh, so there's a lot of really good stuff going on in the X-Men world and comics as well. So they're hitting strides on all cylinders right now. Sounds pretty awesome. Lots of cool stuff going on there. And I know you've, well, going back to the original Sin, there's going to be some cool stuff possibly crossing over later. And uh, I guess to jump back to X-Men real quick, I just saw X-Men actually so far has made 171 million dollars and is Fox's most has it's their biggest it's their biggest year opener to date and it's number 1 in all 119 markets it's launched in nice i like hearing that so they are absolutely cleaning house on that movie which is going to do nothing but put that uh, franchise in good standing with Fox, and I'm sure X-Men will stay owned by Fox for oh. quite some time. <laughs> yeah, they're, gonna, they're gonna settle on in there. So, that will not that will not become a Marvel-owned property anytime soon. <laughs> but Ed, what do you have uh, coming up this week? Oh my gosh, man, there's a big amount of stuff coming out this week. The Doom storyline continues in Superman 31. Uh, this past week, there was just the Batman Superman title, which really didn't have Superman in it, had Crypto in it, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Steel. It was, it was still a very good issue. In Superman 31, it's not just Superman who's changing, but Lois Lane has been affected by Brainiac. She's gotten some psychic powers her, of her own, and those powers are spiking again. Uh, the final issue of Nightwing comes out this week. It's the Forever Evil Aftermath, and of course later we'll see the series Grayson start up. Uh, Batman has a uh, zero year continuing. It's chapter two of the Savage City arc. Uh, Flash 31 comes out. Uh, there's already a picture come out that's come out of a of a version of a Wally West Flash in that's going to be in the Future's End storyline. It won't be in this issue, but it's coming out. It'll be an interesting thing to see. Batman Eternal is out. Justice League Dark, Future's End. And Secret Origins number two is out with Batman, Aquaman, and Starfire. And that's it for the DC stuff, but over in the indies, we've got a lot going on. Uh, at Image, they've got Cowl number one, which is the, the story of the world's first superhero labor union. Uh, and then you've got Chew and Revival put together. This is sort of like having 
Scrubs combined with Law and Order. Uh, I mean, it's it's that strange of a pairing, and for some reason it works. And it's a great jumping on point if you ever want to see what either series is like. Uh, this is a great book to check out. I've had a chance to look at an advanced copy, and uh, it's it's amazing. And then Trees Number One by Warren Ellis is coming out, where Intelligent Life has been around from other planets for ten years, but they've not recognized us as intelligent or even alive. Uh, over at Dark Horse, you've got Captain Midnight, which is their, their Black Project Black Sky initiative is a superhero lineup they're building up in, in anticipation of Star Wars going away. It's really good, and Captain Midnight in particular is really good. Uh, but they've got uh, three different Star Wars books out this week. The Star Wars, which is based on the original movie uh, proposal, Star Wars Legacy, Star Wars Rebel Heist, uh, Serenity Leaves on the Wind is out. Uh, along with the latest Tomb Raider. Uh, at Valiant, Harbinger 23, one of the team, we don't know which one, is going to die in this issue. And then they've got Shadow Man coming out. Uh, Dynamite has another gold key hero, Dr. Spectre, coming out this week. Uh, mm -hmm. Boom has Clive Barker's Nightbreed number one, so that's a brand new one for him. Uh, over at IDW and Darby Pop, City Minded in the Machine, I am in love with this series. Uh, issue number four comes out. This was originally solicited as a four-issue miniseries, uh, but it's going to become an ongoing, and for good reason. It's really good. And then our buddies over at Action Lab and Danger Zone have a new one coming out called Dry Spell, uh, and that number one is coming out this Wednesday as well. So a big week even on uh, not only at DC but on the indie scene as well. Lots of huge books on the indie scene, and for those of you who are still stuck reading Marvel and DC and still reading that as much as they're doing some cool things with their universe, the indie comic book world has some amazing stuff happening. We've said it numerous times, but a lot of the stuff that they're doing is far superior <laughs> to what Marvel and DC are doing in their universes as they're kind of stuck in their own ways of with their current characters and it's refreshing to see what's happening in the indie. So if you haven't picked up any of those or even just looked at them, go grab a couple and check it out. It's 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 worth it's worth doing and maybe one of these days Ed will come up with like the top indie books that everyone has to absolutely read. That will that will work on. I will tell you, folks, if you really like. The, the neat thing with indies is you do get a lot of up and comers, but you also see a lot of your favorite creators from the big two, who have gone over and and they're doing these extra projects here that are creator owned, where you really get to see them cut loose and to do things, it what they would do if they didn't have a lot of editorial interference, and you get to see really that 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 their true talent shine through. There there's some great books out there. So yeah, we'll put a list together. We will put a list together, and we will start. We will start covering must-read indies in the in the podcast and on the website. So, so be on the lookout for that. Coming up next week. Well, next week as well, we got a pretty big week in Marvel. We've got the uh, highly anticipated Inhuman number two, Giant Size Spider-Man number one, Thanos Annual number one, Fantastic Four number five. Wolverine number seven, Uncanny Avengers number twenty, which has been a, a favorite of mine. Uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Prelude number two, as well as number fifteen for the uh, regular series. Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> Thunderbolts number twenty six, and then out of Original Sin, we have a Deadpool tie-in that's going to deal with. Uh, some of his family origin, something that hasn't really been explored too much. Uh, Avengers number 30 and Mighty Avengers number 10, which will deal with the funeral for the Watcher. Awesome stuff. Guardians. Love it. Love anything <laughs> Guardians. <laughs> Love, love it. By the way, I got to see the trailer on the big screen before X-Men, and was it, it was still one? awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, the new extended trailer. Yeah, I know. I saw. I read. I read. <laughs> I read your article. You're like, I didn't get any good previews. I know. I, like, I mean, I mean, I saw it in 3D, and I got to see. <laughs> I got to see the know, 3D version. 
I, at first I thought surely they'll th they'll show Guardians, but then I was like, well, that's that's a uh, Marvel. That's their competition. Maybe they won't. But then again, I thought, well, they might not have control over that, so maybe we will. No. Oh yeah, they definitely definitely get in a Guardians trailer. It was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. <clears throat> so for those of you go grab uh, go grab some indie books this week. Read them if you haven't seen X Men. Go get X Men. Go watch X Men and uh, enjoy. It's one of the better movies that we've seen this summer, probably since Captain America. Also, Neighbors, which is completely not comic book related, but that was flipping hilarious. So uh, I I would recommend that if you haven't seen that too, on the movie forefront. But with that being said, thanks for joining us this week, and everybody keep reading the stash. Have a good night. Good night. Nein.